he pays for them with the sale of his of his work. Финансират от продажбата на работите от предишните пътувания. А как се финансирало първото? The first one would have been relatively inexpensive. Like I said, they would have camped. It would have been fewer people. They've gotten more. You see that the production values have gotten higher. It's like a filmmaker, and the difference between a student film. A film that had minimal financing and a big budget studio film. You see these kind of aesthetic differences, and you see the difference in what he's able to kind of achieve. But the first ones, you know, certainly there was there was money coming in at that point when he started them in 2009. Is that right? 2000? No, earlier. It's earlier. 2005, actually. There would have been money coming in, but it wouldn't. Have been enough to rent hotels for everyone or or anything like that. Yeah. Um. Iskat da se vrnem za nešto koje to veće beše spomenuto. Zatvar kak sled kad to i Ryan stane izvestan, kak tizi snimke, koji to predi se bili vazprijemane kato mnogo skandalni, a veče so často od eženevija to ne. Veče socijalnite mediji in vopšte mnogo spisanja in druge fotografije prijema tva. Stana je edna tendencija v fotografije, da vopreme, kato stilistika in kato tip nešta, kam kojto se nasotvati z obšta fotografije, kada snimat, tudi kot tipačna hora, kojto, mladi hora, kojto se snimat. Soodvedno bih vam mogli da kažem, če je sred, kot to izstavljam toliko izvestan, imaš eno mnogo mladi fotografije, kot da okupirat. Kak to je vas prijema tazi tja grupa na fotografiju, koja tako presledva, posledva, ne, predva, i po nekak način go brzo mnogo vdrhnobeni od njega, da kažem. I zašto tako, sled kot večja ta fotografija ne zelja, nekak se stala toliko mainstream, i to je čoveka, koji tako se zdade tva, da li ne, kakvi smo planove da je za bodišta, da li ne iskam da, ne znam, da na, da promeni, da nek si, da promeni akcenta si v nekaj druga posoka, da... Zašto to več, več je sled celjate uspeh iz vsečkih tezi izložbi, a to več je poznato. Da li ima ideja za bodišče, bodišče promjene? I think for the first, to address the first question, I think something that Sanisha said that's important and it's something to always keep in mind about Ryan is that he's, he's incredibly generous. And I think that he's, when you look at the yearbook photographs, you see how, or hear, when you hear him speak about them, you can tell immediately how supportive he is of young artists and how important they are to him. They're the people that he surrounds himself with. He, you know, when he has young friends or, or assistants who will have an exhibition, he's the first person there. He's very present and very appreciative and generous. So I think, you know, for him, the fact that his practice has sort of radically altered what a young photographer can do is, is the ideal outcome. It's the thing that he would want most. Um, and, as for the second question, you know, I think that the the studio practice, which is relatively new for him within the past four years, um, 
this is something I think he's examined it to the degree to which it can be examined with the yearbook series. I think that this was kind of the last um, serious exploration of this as a, a method. And I'm sure that there will be another one that comes along. I think that the road trip works or the outdoor photography is something that will be a sort of source of continuity throughout his work. Um, I'm sure that he'll always make them. I think that they represent something central to his work um, that can't be lost. But I'm sure that there will be new examples of him trying something else because he is so engaged and he is so concerned with maintaining his vitality and with being, you know, like a, an artist who has fresh eyes. And I think that the yearbook series was him having fresh eyes. And there's, there's no question that will happen again. We just don't know what it will be, which is exciting. В едно негово интервю Райан казва, че докато е бил в университета, неговите идоли са били Джимми Хендрикс, там всички, които умират на възраст около 27 години. След което обаче той преминава възрастта от 27 години и разбира, че живота ма е доста по-дълъг и има още много неща, които той да направи. Интересно ми е как се чувства, разбирайки, че живота продължава. Как се чувства, след като е решил, че пътя е доста по-дълъг, отколкото първоначално е смята? I think that Ryan experienced a series of very significant losses within the last seven to ten years. Um, people that were very close to him, a lot of overdoses, a lot of death, a lot of young people living too fast. And I think that that, that loss and that those experiences have kind of shifted the way that he interprets his own mortality. And I think that even when you look at those early photographs that he took of Dash Snow or Dan Colin, you know, doing graffiti or illegal things and being reckless and life was reckless, there's a, there's a distance between who he is now and who he was then, but he's always trying to, I think that part of what he was attracted to about that kind of character um, is that recklessness is kind of the intoxicant of, of being young because you don't think about dying. So I think he wants to capture that kind of innocence of a person who's not concerned with death without being so directly engaged with it. They're like coffee table books. Coffee table books, right? My question is, in fact, how the images that we see in the album, in these coffee table books, relate to the big prints that we see now in the gallery space? And for example, how they will be reflected in the collection's value? големите принтове, които се купуват и продават. Благодаря. Well, I mean, this coffee table book is as you put it, um, is actually the only, it, there hasn't been only this one made by Rizzoli. The other books are more um, as artist books, um, that being uh, 
you know, an object that, that is autonomous and that um, is produced to convey a singular idea. Um, I mean, the value of the work. I, I mean, there's big books, books are something that are, that are permanent. Um, you know, they'll be around forever and they're important for all artists. So obviously they will, um, they bring a certain significance to, to an artist's practice. Аз не мисля, че в случая тези, тези книги, тези публикации имат самостоятелно съществуване и те трябва да се мислят като наистина не като фотографско разпространение на, на образа, по-скоро като наистина художествени каталози или художнически книги, които се използват. В случая на каталог той всъщност е дори средство за продаването на, 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 на другите неща, защото то разпространява, то е също по принцип престижно а, и а, по принцип колекционерите харесват да купуват неща, които вече са били публикувани в каталози. Мисля, че в случая за това, което говорите, по-скоро е по-сложно действително, защото е колекция от образи, които могат да имат втори различен живот в вид на публикация. Но принципно в света на изкуството обикновено каталога не намаля цената на, на работата. А, какво точно е колата на модели по време на снимачния процес? Um, I think that one of the first things that Ryan is very careful about whenever he brings this large group of people out on a trip is that he uses the distance between where they start and where they first start shooting to make sure that everyone knows each other. And he also talks about um, how disarming it is to take someone's clothes off and how much that experience when it happens within a group of 10 people bonds them together. So, you know, I think that, that when they're on these trips, they're thinking about, it's like a kind of bubble. It's a, a little social bubble where these people are becoming friends. Sometimes they fall in love. Um, you know, it's just like the sort of experience of a year that's collapsed into a month. I think that part of what you see when you look at these images is that you know, everyone is kind of having fun. I've never seen a road trip photograph that feels uncomfortable or like someone feels like they're being exploited or like they're nervous. There's like a, a certain kind of liberation. And so I think that they're just experiencing that moment um, and experiencing the trip as kind of a, a mini life in a way. повече въпроси. Всъщност, много ви благодарим за участието и за присъствието. Разбира се, да благодаря и на всичките институции и хора, които направиха тази изложба възможна. Нашите партньори Америка за България, Американското посолство, виното, което ще пиеме след малко на откриването. И може би а, и общината да. А, и на Viva.com, Артхо.